It's Motivation Monday, and this week we're going to show you how to get moving at the El Paso Zoo. If you visit the zoo and you walk the entire zoo, you could get at least 6,000 steps. And I know 10,000 is usually the recommended on a daily average. We've got some mice over here. They come frozen. We thaw them before we feed them to the animals. There are also many correlations between animal and human diets that can be very useful. Even our treat foods are fairly healthy. So we give them some cereal, for example, like, but it's going to be whole grain Cheerios type cereal, not frosted flakes. Um, we give them uh, maybe some jello, but it's going to be sugar free jello. They like that kind of stuff. So we'll use treats. We use peanut butter, we use honey, we use a lot of natural products. A children's program at the zoo makes it easy to go to the zoo to get some exercise and teach kids about good nutrition. You can always make it fun, you know. Why don't you eat your broccoli like Juno does or Savannah? And there's one resident at the zoo that shares a disease with thousands of people in the borderland. We have Tex. He is our male Simon and he was diagnosed with diabetes, so he actually has to have insulin every single day. Finally, Gear Friday will wrap up with volunteerism and how it can lead to a special relationship like this one. Good boy. So join us this week as we show you why you don't need a gym to get some exercise into your day. And how you can learn why eating like a giraffe can be a good thing. Cape Box 14, Carpe Diem. The El Paso Zoo serves many purposes and one of them can be for exercise. There's not a better place to walk than the zoo. There, it's beautiful. You can walk everywhere. You can see all the animals every day and I love it. I could walk 30 minutes and that's just perfect for me. If you visit the zoo and you walk the entire zoo, you could get at least 6,000 steps. And I know 10,000 is usually the recommended on a daily average. So, I mean, you could get half your steps in if you just visit the zoo once a day. Running is not allowed at the zoo, but you'd be surprised how far you have gone if you walk around just one time at the zoo. It's a little over one mile. Um, and about a little over 5,000 steps. The El Paso Zoo is actually expanding its exercise program and developing a system that'll work with Fitbit. And there are no rules against fast walking. You could come every single day to the zoo if you'd like. So we have a lot of, you know, new moms that come with their strollers almost once a week just to get some exercise, some fresh air. And there are no rules against slow walking either. We have some uh, senior citizens that come that like to get some walking in and steps in. And if walking and looking at animals is still not enough for you, the zoo has a way to track yourself. We have a Wild About Health map and that kind of lets you know um, at a certain point, you know, you start here and how many, uh, how far you walked. In fact, walking at the zoo is the perfect way to seize the day and rediscover a place you may not have been since you were a kid. A lot of people um, actually come here to exercise. I mean, it's a great, I mean, it's a great park. Um, there's a lot of trees, a lot of vegetation that you don't see in the rest of the city. Tomorrow, we'll show you how the zoo uses this. You can pull it up on a mobile app. We have it on elpasozoo.org. It helps you teach kids about diet and exercise in relation to the animals at the zoo. Maybe you could learn something too. We'll show you tomorrow on KFOX 14 Carpe Diem. What do you think that our elephant eats? Trying to get your kids to get some exercise and learn something about nutrition? Maybe it's time to let them act like animals. There's a scavenger hunt that you can um, pick up at the front gate when you come. And um, there's little signs throughout the zoo and it'll give little facts and then you um, check them off and things like that. The El Paso Zoo even has an app for that. You can pull it up on a mobile app. 
we have it on elpasozoo.org. They can use the scavenger hunt to find the different signs that we have around the zoo, and each of the signs uh, talks about something a little bit different. The app is based in the El Paso Zoo's scavenger hunt called Wild About Health. So Wild About Health is a partnership with the Department of Health that um, at, with the city that they entered into a grant with El Paso Zoo and um, we actually got an award for it. It's just a fun way for kids to see that animals have to have healthy lifestyles too. They eat vegetables and you, you can eat vegetables too to stay healthy. I think uh, parents can use it to kind of get their kids interested in trying something new and I mean you can always make it fun, you know. Why don't you eat your broccoli like Juno does or Savannah? Drinking water, making sure that you play, um, moderation, you know, I think um, we can have a lot of different things, maybe even those sweets, but everything has to be in moderation. Carrie Trudeau is an expert at finding creative ways for animal kids to eat. She said there's a lesson here for human parents. So we have Tons of different ways to present animals with food so that we're not just putting out a silver dish out there for them to eat out of. Carrie says the animals are sometimes like kids. They want eating to be fun. So we have different kinds of puzzle feeders, uh, items that the animals need to manipulate, open, get into underneath, uh, any number of things so that they have to uh, kind of work for their food uh, so that they can spend a longer time using those, uh, using those techniques. And she says it's good to engage kids and animals both in ways that stimulate their minds and their mouths. Well, we could very easily make life too easy for animals here and have them just kind of sit around and, and serving them their food on a silver tray. But we try to make things more complicated, replicate what it would be in the wild. Uh, and the same with people, uh, you know, we could sit in front of the TV all day long and have very little stimulation in our brain. So just reading a book or doing a Sudoku puzzle or, or any number of those things can help keep us active just like the animals mentally. What the animals eat is a major factor in what kids and adults can learn at the zoo. These are mealworms. We'll show you how that comes into play tomorrow on KFOX 14 Carpe Diem. You may be surprised what you have in common with the animals at the zoo when it comes to your diet. Dr. Victoria Milney is the senior veterinarian at the zoo. Part of her job is making sure the animals eat healthy foods that help them thrive. They have some really good uh, diets full of fresh vegetables. You can see in the underneath the, um, the cut vegetables here, there's a salad mix. This is uh, mostly like kale, collard greens, mustard greens, all kinds of different greens. Those are all the rage right now with people, but they are extremely healthy. They contain a lot of vitamins and nutrients. Dr. Milne points out that aside from bags of frozen mice and buckets of insects, the zoo kitchen is very much filled with things which should be in a people kitchen. Just like with people, the more fruits and vegetables that you eat and the wider variety, the more likely you are to get all of those really healthy nutrients. In fact, the zoo Zoo Kitchen operates very much like a professional restaurant. They'll eat bugs, rodents, um, as well as some greens. A staple favorite at the zoo, fresh green salad mix with slightly furry protein topped with a two-inch tail and crunchy crouton-esque insects. No salad dressing. Clearly not for human consumption, but it is something you can learn about in person. We do behind the scenes programs where they get to meet some of the animals that we have here in the zoo. Then they go to the commissary where they'll actually see what all the different animals eat. The zoo takes nutrition seriously. We want to use high quality stuff. Um, it's not like a bruise on an apple is a bad thing, but we do get all of our produce. It's not old and you know, we take good care of it. What do you think that our elephant eats? And there are programs that adults and kids can participate in to learn about nutrition as it relates to both humans and animals. The kids and the participants will actually go into the elephant exhibit, hide the food for the elephants, then we exit, the elephants will come in and they're gonna look for all of the food that you just hid. It is a really neat experience. Just like our animals, we don't want them to just sit and eat. So I think anytime people are sitting in front of the TV, it's a less healthier way to, to uh, to get your nutrition. If you're out active, going for a hike, eating an apple, that's a, definitely a healthier way to live. Dr. Milne says there are many correlations that can be made in how animals and people should be eating. I can calculate how many calories this animal is supposed to get, and then I can say, okay, we're okay to have 5% of those calories be things that we call treat foods. And even our treat foods are 
fairly healthy. So we give them some cereal, for example. Other treats for the 56 species of animals at the El Paso Zoo include peanut butter, honey, and marshmallows, which are a special treat for everyone, whether on two legs or four. Even um, our elephants will work with us for these tiny little marshmallows just because they love them. And luckily, marshmallows are mostly air, so they're not as, as um, bad as some of the other sugary treats that they could get. And of course, there are carnivores at the zoo. Tomorrow, we'll meet Rudo and the volunteer with whom he has forged a special friendship. And we'll meet Tex, whose diet has to be managed because he has a disease shared by many people in the borderland. KFOX 14, Carpe Diem. It's Gear Friday, and let's face it, there isn't too much gear involved to visit a zoo. So let's explore three interesting aspects of the El Paso Zoo you may not know. First, let's meet Tex. He was diagnosed with diabetes, so he actually has to have insulin every single day. Tex is a family ape, a Saimang who lives in a family unit with a female and their teen daughter. We started noticing that he was um, eating a lot, but was not gaining weight. At one point, Tex was weak and seemed disoriented. Soon enough, we found out that that's what was going on with him, that he actually had uh, insulin dependent um, diabetes, which is kind of like type one diabetes in humans. Since then, Tex has learned through positive reinforcement to allow the animal experts at the zoo to give him insulin. Griselda says it's been a learning experience for all and a possible form of outreach that can educate others. Basically what happened with Tex is something that can also happen to humans. If, you know, if they don't track their glucose or if they're not living healthy. This is Rudo, he's our three-year-old lion we've had we've had him for about a year year and a half we got him out of seattle washington he's here for breeding rudo has been here since he was a cub he was brought to el paso to breed but so far he's been nervous about that prospect i've been watching him for a year because he's been a little bit shy rudo isn't even full grown he has about 200 pounds to go his mane will grow as he matures so we're giving him time to grow get larger and hopefully the girls will look at him differently in a, another year or so. Meantime, Rudo has developed a special bond with Susanna. With Rudo, I sit here with him, I stay with him. If he gets too nervous, uh, he will come and sit by my window and I'll play music for him. Just musical music, I mean, not singing, not lyrics. And he likes it, it calms him. And Susanna is exactly the kind of species the zoo can't live without. All of our volunteers are assigned different jobs every day, um, depending on how the zoo needs us. Susanna says she comes here every day to see Rudo. She gets to socialize, and like all the volunteers, she gets to be active in a fun way. If I have my Fitbit on or my activity tracker, I'll look at it at the end of the day and say, oh my goodness, I walked 13 miles today because we're just like walking around and um, helping people and walking throughout the zoo. And we don't really have carts, so we're doing everything by foot. On average, the volunteers put in about 20 hours a month. And our volunteers are senior citizens, they're college students, they range from every type of different profession. So it's a great way to give back to the community. And it's a great way to give back to the animals that provide so much to the community as well. He was so scared the first three months, three, six months, that they needed me more. Right now, I'm not sure he needs me, but I love doing it, so I'm still here until they tell me not to. Kate Fox 14, Carpe Diem.